be blessed. Morning, Grace. My name is Deirdre, and I'm going to do the scripture reading this morning. This morning I'm reading in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, through chapter 5, verse 5. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. News about him spread as far as Syria, and people soon began bringing to him all who were sick. And whatever their sickness or disease, or if they were demon-possessed or epileptic or paralyzed, he healed them all. Large crowds followed him wherever he went. People from Galilee, the Ten Towns, Jerusalem, from all over Judea, and from east of the Jordan River. One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. Thank you, Deirdre. Um, if we have children who are here, please stand. I can't see any, but if you are, we want to bless you. We thank you for being with us in worship to this point, and uh, we hope that you have an amazing time in your classrooms for what remains of the day. So we bless and send you at this moment. So... How many of you guys would say by nature you just tend to be a little curious? Okay, maybe, maybe most of us. I, I am always curious about why things happen, how things happen. Very, very curious about things. I have also found that as I increase my level of curiosity, it decreases my level of judgment. So rather than being judgmental about something that I see or hear immediately, I always ask my question, I wonder what's going on there. I wonder what she or he is thinking. I wonder why they did that versus, I can't believe they continue to do that, right? So curiosity is good because it helps us to grow and learn new things and think new thoughts. It's good. Um, and it also keeps us from becoming judgmental. Um, all this works in a variety of different parts of my life. Like, for example, so I'm a pastor, right? I've gone through the process of training and learning and reading and thinking. And I've been here for almost 30 years. But prior to that, I got a master's in divinity. I was seized by the notion that I could do this for a living, that out of my calling, that I could prepare myself and learn and grow and think and become the best possible version and hopefully help others like yourself do the same. So, but I'm curious when I read the Bible. Sometimes I read the Bible even after all these years and I'm like, I just don't get it. That just doesn't make sense. I wonder what's going on there. I think about that. And I'm sure if you read your Bible enough, you have to have those kind of thoughts. Well, I'm curious about Jesus. Jesus, we've just sung about Jesus, about his life, and about the difference that he makes in our lives as we learn from him and become like him. But I'm curious about Jesus because there's just so much of his life that we don't know about. Right? The gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they tell us about the birth of Jesus, right? And they tell us about the end part of his life, the last few years, and even his death. But I think to myself, what was going on in like middle school years with Jesus, and high school years? What, I wonder what was going on. Like, how did he do with his grades? 
you know? He was obviously good, like, at woodworking, right? But, like, how do he do with languages? How do he do with mathematics? How do he do with history, the languages? Like, I wonder how he did. Did he have hobbies? Did he like to dance? And if he liked to dance, did he have rhythm? I think about these things. <laughs> did he have friends? If he had friends, what were his friends like? Did they feel inferior in his presence when he was doing all these supernatural things? I think about these things, and I wonder, like, what happened to the missing years? Why is there no chronicling of those years? Until I ran across this book, which answered everything that I needed to know. This is a novel called Lamb, the Gospel According to Biff, Christ's Childhood Pal. You ever heard this? Apparently, Jesus had a best bud by the name of Biff, who, who in this book chronicles everything that happened during the early years of Jesus, even including the time where they went to the Far East to learn Kung Fu. So, I can't really, because of lack of time, it's a funny book, but I can't, because of the time that we have left, go through all of the escapades that Biff and Jesus shared. But I will say this, there is this part, because we've been working for the last couple of weeks on this series called Hashtag Blessed, where we've been looking at the Beatitudes, each of the eight Beatitudes, and we're on number three today, and I just thought that maybe it might be helpful for you to learn how the Beatitudes came into place, because apparently Biff and Jesus were workshopping some thoughts before we got to the final edits of what it is, so I'll just share with you a little bit from Biff's perspective on how some of the Beatitudes came into being. So he says, how, how are we doing on the Beatitudes? Well, so far we've got blessed are the poor in spirit and blessed are those who mourn. Next up we have the meek. So what should we give the meek? Let's see. Uh, blessed are the meek. For to them we shall say, attaboy. I don't know, that seems a little weak. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right about that. Well, what, what do you think we should give them? What should we give the meek? Um, how about a fruit basket? Maybe we could give the meek a fruit basket. You can't give the poor in spirit the kingdom of heaven and give the meek a fruit basket. It just doesn't work. Yeah, you're right. How about we let the meek, uh, I don't know, inherit the earth? Earth to the meek, that's better. Hey, Josh, which is what he called Jesus. Yeah, Biff, uh, why do we have to have the meek, the poor, and the sad on our team? Why can't we have any heavy hitters in our lineup? Why not just once we have, blessed are the big, powerful, rich guys with swords? Well, that's easy, Biff. They're not on the team because they don't want to be on the team. They don't need us. And I'll stop there. As Jesus begins his famous Sermon on the Mount, he, he begins to share these categories of people who are blessed. Now, last week I told you, in order to see something, it ultimately depends on the lens through which you're looking at something. That's why two or three people can look at the exact same thing and see something totally different. So for me to see that these certain groups of people are blessed, I have to look through the right lens because it's not natural for me to think immediately that those who are poor in spirit, that those who are sad and who mourn, and that those who are meek get anything that they're blessed in any way. But Jesus says that they are. Now, this week we're going to focus on the meek. This is week three. When you hear the word, and it's not used very often. I don't hear this in, every, in everyday conversation with people. But when you hear the word meek, what do you tend to think of? Shy? Weak? Soft? Wimpy? Quiet, okay, meek and mild. Yeah, when I hear the word meekness, I think of weakness. Those two things, maybe because they rhyme, I'm not sure, but 
When I think of the word meek, I don't typically think of someone who is blessed. I think of one who gets walked on, walked over. I think of one who doesn't really have their opinions heard. I think of somebody who tends to kind of, by nature, just sort of cower in the corner and like to be a part of the scenery more than to have their voice heard. Um, I think oftentimes, and this is what I want us to do on the front end of just looking at this passage, I think we confuse meekness with weakness, but that is not what the original word meant, and it's not what Jesus is thinking about when he uses this word to bless this group. A more accurate definition for the word meekness would be power under control. Power under control. So here in chapter 5, Matthew uses the word, it's a Greek word called praus, P-R-A-U-S, when he's talking about meek. But he also uses this word several more times in his gospel. He uses it a handful of times. It gives us insight as we hear each time it's used, it gives us insight as to what it actually is. So in chapter 11, verses 29, the same word that he uses for blessed are the meek, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and prouse, humble in heart. Again in chapter 21, as he prepares for his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, he says, look, your king is coming to you. He is prouse, he is humble, riding on a donkey. And finally in chapter 23, when Jesus teaches about what greatness looks like, he says, those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble, prouse themselves, will be exalted. With each picture that Matthew unfolds and gives us within the context of other larger stories of the word meek, we have a person who has power, but who also has humility, who also has some level of gentleness in their character. Power is exercised in these instances through humble, gentle service for the benefit of the others. The Apostle Paul would use a similar word, not the exact same word, but a similar word in his letter to the Philippians when he says the following. Do not look out for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had, that though he was God... He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine, he gave up his privileges, and he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. Imagine for a moment what life on planet Earth would be like if we had the same attitude of Jesus. If we used our power the power that is given to us to serve and to bless and to build up rather than to oppress and to keep down. Jesus invites us to move from comparison and competition to a humble way of being, not always thinking of ourselves and how this situation is going to benefit us or those we care about, but genuinely thinking of others and how we can contribute to their life through service and making life better for them. We don't need to rule by force at the expense of others. We use the power given us, we have, to lift others up and bless them, but also to bless the earth. So when Jesus says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, it makes perfect sense, because only a gentle and humble person knows the inherent blessing and worth of all creation. And only a meek person, only a humble and gentle person would take initiative for protecting our planet rather than destroying our planet. To be the heir of something means that we've been giving something that is to be treasured. Our job is to be good stewards of that legacy. God created the heavens and the earth and entrusted the earth into our care. Therefore, we are not to strip it of its resources. We are, 
not to use things to benefit or bless ourselves solely. It's really pretty simple. We can't inherit the earth if there's nothing left to inherit. And so we have to stop and ask ourselves, are we being good stewards of what has been entrusted to us? Or are we taking and using for our own good at the expense of others and the earth itself? With mountains stripped of their tops, oceans filled with plastic, and the air choked with pollutants, only those who use their inheritance to reinforce their own desire for being a blessing to others are worthy of inheriting the privilege. Because they understand the concept of meekness, power under control, stewardship, genuine caring for others and for all of creation because it has been gifted to us in such a way that we are to do something with it. It makes perfect sense to me that the meek inherit the earth. They're the only ones who will do right by it. We have a responsibility as stewards of the earth and to take what power has been given us and use for good. To use it for good in how we treat one another, but also the earth. The earth can only be entrusted to people who will treat it well. It's time for us to wake up and realize that for a long time, we as a people have been asleep. We've been asleep at the wheel, entrusted with something that was truly treasured by God to give to those who would do well by it. And there are a lot of ways that we can do that and a lot of ways that we must moving forward. The more that we see with these ever-increasing storms that are happening, that are flooding places to the point where people are dying and the land is being ravaged, we have to wake up and see that there's something that we must do if we are going to have anything left to inherit or to treasure. We among all people, as people who are followers of Christ, need to be meek so that we can inherit the blessing given to us and take care of it in such a way that it's honoring to God. It's time for us to wake up and to do right with the inheritance given to us. So there are a lot of opportunities, there are a lot of ways in which we can do this, and we'll talk more about them in the days to come. But it's time for us as people of faith, to be at the top of the list in the way that we care about creation. People are not only dying, our earth is dying. And it's up to us to do something about it. And we can, and we must. We are stewards. We who understand power under control must do something as we move forward. There's so many places in the scriptures that are spoken to the care, the creation care and the care of the earth. And I think as we read through and learn more about it, especially as followers of the way, it should, it should speak to us, to our conscience, that in some way we can't just let this stuff continue to happen and do nothing about it. How long, how long before we step up and do our part? I would not ask you to do anyone else's part but to simply take responsibility and do your own part. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit this beautiful earth that has been entrusted to us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for seeing people in ways that help to elevate and bless them when the rest of us would simply go by them and not even notice that they were there. The poor in spirit, those who are sad and mourning, and the meek, you see them, you notice them, and you entrust to them great things. And I pray that as we think through these lists of blessings that we would begin to see like you do, that would help us to live like you did. 
and be a blessing not only to one another, but be a blessing to this earth and to care for it in the way that it is much needed and required. In advance, as you open our eyes to things that we've maybe overlooked, things that maybe we've not seen, I ask that you would help us to become part of the solution and not the problem. And in advance, for all of the consciences that you awaken, and for all of the good that is done on behalf of this good earth, and the people who fill this good earth, we will give you thanks. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you will. In about five or ten minutes, for those of you who desire, we will come back and do a Q&A. So if you have questions, if you have comments, if there's things that you'd like to process in community, you're welcome to do that. There are others of you who will go and enjoy some coffee and snacks uh, back in the back. And if that's what you want to do, I encourage you to do that. Maybe meet some new friends, catch up with some old friends. And some of you have to leave. So whatever it is that you're doing or wherever it is that you're going, I always encourage you to be people of grace and peace. God bless you guys. Have a great day.